Hi there, this is uh, Joseph with another QML tutorial. Um, in our last tutorial, we learned how to uh, get things and set things. Um, probably none of it makes much sense at this point, but it will in the uh, up and coming future. So let's put this, some things a little bit more together here with all of this. Let's go back over to our Q file and uh, let's, oh geez, let's take a look at its, uh, let's take a look at that example again with the Qtext string. So we have this uh, file reader.cpp and let's just put this down here for right now uh, and comment it out so it doesn't, whatever. So we have a Q file, right? And then we have a file name, right? Or, or a file that's been assigned here and we have a file that it wants to read from and it says if it's not open so on and so forth right well we need to put this into a function right uh, that we need to be able to use right with like a method or, or, or something of that nature right excuse me so if we go into uh, file reader the the header here let's make a function called uh, void uh, run or void read file right that's wonderful. Okay, so let's uh, let's refactor this. I'm right clicking, if you didn't know, and just going down, add definition uh, to file reader, and there it is, right? So let's take this right here, right? Let's copy that. Let's uncomment it, copy it, kill it, bring it over here, and let's clean this all up. Okay, so we have a new function here called read file, right? And it takes no parameters in. If we wanted to add parameters, we could. And we're going to see why that's important here in just a second. Uh, well, of course it's important. There's a couple things in this that I'm not seeing. First of all, we would want to close the file. Uh, we would say uh, file.close. And just to be safe, let's flush the toilet. OK. It's all written to disk. So we have this. Uh, we have this right here, this in.txt, right? Uh, that's the file that it's looking for to read from, right? Um, and you, as you probably guessed, that's why we set these getters and setters right here. But for uh, the sake of this tutorial, we're going to be dealing with uh, methods and something called qInvocable, uh, which is used to set a, uh, a, a, well, it's not a setter. It's it's used to to run a command or or a function from a class, uh, so to say, right? So we have this function right here called file reader, right? If we were to say constant q string, and we would say uh, I don't know in file, right? Let's now copy this right here. Let's go back over to our header. And let's add that right there, right? Take out the class name. Okay, we're good to go, right? Add a comma at the end of it, and there we go, right? So let's go back over to our read file function right here. Um, of course, we would set this part right here now to be in file, right? Because we're taking in whatever file, right? And it's going into the Q file. Now, before I go much further or anything, I want to show you what this is going to end up looking like at the end of the day, right? So what we would have is, well, not completely at the end of the day, but we would have something called file reader, right? And then we would have, you know, uh, if we'd give it an ID like reader, then we would say, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, we could assign file name if we wanted to, right? To something, you know, like opt bin whatever uh, foo that t x t right or uh, and, and that's what we were doing with our getters and setters right there um, or we could do a function right we could do something like this we could we just call it reader right and uh, let's clean this up and then back over to our uh, our header here. If we were to add the qInvocable uh, macro, uh, whatever it is, in front of it, that's done now. We are done. So, what we would, what this would look like at the end of the day, right here in QML, it would look like this. It would be, I don't know, uh, component uncompleted. 
and it'd be reader dot read file and then passing in our our string for opt bin foo.txt right and that's how it would read the file okay that's 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 you know kind of like our method or whatever uh anyways let's get rid of all that let's clean it up some and go back over here so but for our case what we were what we want to do is, is we want to have getters and setters um and more along the lines of this will be coming a lot later there's a lot to all of this but what will be coming later is is uh signals and slots and as soon as the thing's loaded run this run that do whatever uh so on and so forth anyways uh let's take this and call this m file name right because we got our getter and our setter right okay and we can still call the invocable right but we got to go back over to our header and take out this part right here we can still call it as an invocable here right void read file that's awesome okay that's wonderful so let's take a look at signals really quick so in this queue property that we set up um, there's a there's a part of it called notify and we could say uh, file name changed. Now down in our signals down here, we would say void, file name changed. And there we go. We now have a signal that points to this when it changes. But there's something really, really important that we need to do here. And this is because we're dealing with C++. Uh, many other languages are like this too, but uh, because we have such power here, with dealing with memory and all these sorts of things, we also have the capability of having memory leaks. Um, and that's something that we don't want. So if we actually go back to our set file name right here, and we say, let's do this, let's say, if okay if m file name is equal to the file name right so if it is the file name then let's return nothing right else okay let's say m file name is equal to file name right and now let's omit the signal so we're emitting a signal to file name changed right so what this would do if we were to look at our QML over here, if we had something like file reader and we said on file name changed. Okay. So uh, do something text equals whatever, right? Uh, so on file name changed, what that would actually do okay is as it would look here and it would say at the at the setter right it would say hey is this file name the same thing right if it is just return nothing right basically it's set right okay but if it, if m file name is not equal to the file name then set it as that but also emit the signal that says file name has been changed, right? And so that's how that works on the QML side of things, right? So like when we say on text change, on whatever, we are looking at signals, we are looking at different things. Um, and if we did not have this little checker right here, and we just said, you know, m file name equals file name emit name changed, if m file name was equal to file name, that's where our memory lossage starts to come into play. So, recapping part two here. What have we done? We learned about signals, basically, is what ended up happening in this tutorial. We also learned that we're going to need a function here to be able to call, and how to call things on a method style with an invocable uh, in our header file, right? With our invocable, right? Okay, so now we have our functions, right? We have our functions. We have our getters, our setters, and we have a read part of the file. We also have added a file name changed signal here. And we also added it to the QML property, right? 
so it knows when the file name changes from QML to notify it that the file name changed. And we also are double checking and making sure that we're having no memory loss on the, on the back end of things here in our setter itself. Well, I am Joseph. We are getting closer. In the next tutorial, we'll actually implement the rest of this so we can actually read from a file. We'll have a invocable uh, that makes it so that we can read from the file uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so something I, I want to say about these tutorials that I'm making right now, of course, there's going to be other ways of doing this, right? There, there's, there's many ways of working with C++ and other programming languages. But what I'm trying to do here, and trying being the keyword, um, I'm trying to show you guys the basic examples of getters and setters, the method, uh, you know, signals. Uh, we'll get into slots later on, uh, dealing with private things, uh, why it's important that it's inherent of an object. Uh, you know, setting it up for QML itself. Like if I was to write this class myself, this thing would be completely different. But because I'm trying to do a primer, so to say, um, that's why I'm do that's why I'm dealing with it in this sort of manner. So just just know that um, in the comments below and so on and so forth. I know that there's other ways of reading files. I know that there's you know a million other different things that you can do. But that said, it's important to understand why this is like that. Um, uh, well, I'm Joseph, and uh, I appreciate you viewing. Uh, subscribe if you like. Uh, hit the plus one button if you like. I don't care. Uh, but I am Joseph. Uh, be nice to everybody out there, and uh, enjoy yourself.